My mother-in-law, who came to my mother's funeral, grinned and said, This house will be inherited by my son. I wonder if I should take this room. I replied, Um, actually, I'm the one inheriting this house. She retorted, I know, but isn't it true that a wife's belongings belong to her husband? So, in essence, this house belongs to my son, right? I sighed. Is that really the case? She cheerfully added. From now on, let's get along. I hesitated. What do you mean by a get along? She declared. I mean turning this room into my room. I asked. Does that mean we'll be living together? She confidently replied. Exactly. I've decided. With such a splendid house, it'd be a waste to have empty rooms when two people can live here, don't you think? Despite my recent loss, my mother-in-law seemed blissfully unaware of my grief. Why would she bring this up now? Can't she see the sadness on my face? It's no time for jokes. This house holds precious memories. It was built by my respected father and was my mother's cherished home. I don't want my unreasonable mother-in-law to live here. And my husband, who doesn't stop it, is equally at fault. To prevent my precious home from being tainted, I decided to take the initiative before moving out. I am a 42-year-old office worker. Having missed the timing for marriage and still being single after turning 40, I had given up on the idea of getting married. However, through an acquaintance's introduction, I met Michael, who is four years younger than me, and we were able to get married. My husband is a kind person who prioritizes my opinions. Where should we go for our honeymoon? You mentioned that Europe would be nice, right? I asked. But didn't you say you preferred the Maldives? Let's go to the Maldives. My husband replied. My mom wants to live with us, my dad's health isn't great, and it seems my mom is finding it challenging to manage alone. He explained. I understand that your mom is going through a tough time, but didn't we agree not to live together before we got married? You're right, I'll talk to my mom about it. My husband always listens to my whims, and I often feel guilty about it. Meeting a good person is a joy. But there's one regret. My father passed away three years before I got married, so I couldn't show him my wedding and reassure him. My father was a strict executive at a small and medium enterprise, and I deeply respected him. Despite the modest size of the company, his income was decent, and our family home was sizable enough to hold a funeral. As I began working as an office employee, I gained a deeper understanding of the challenges of work, which only increased my admiration for my father. And then, two years after our marriage, my mother also passed away. Even mom. My husband asked. Are you okay? Shouldn't you take a break in the back room? Funerals are generally less commonly held at home, but my mother's funeral was conducted at home. During my mother's funeral, he always looked out for me. Truly, I was fortunate to have met such a good husband. That's when my mother-in-law, Nancy, arrived. My deepest condolences. I sincerely sympathize with you. I replied. Thank you. I hadn't lived together with my mother-in-law, and our interactions had been limited maintaining a reasonable distance. However, it was during my mother's funeral that I glimpsed her true nature. After the funeral, my mother-in-law approached me. It wasn't strange for her to come to me, but her expression was oddly gleeful. We greatly appreciate your assistance during this funeral. Thanks to you, we were able to smoothly complete the ceremony. Then she said, the funeral is over now, isn't it? 
Enough with the formalities. I was taken aback. Initially, I thought my mother-in-law was trying to be kind, considering my grief. But it became clear that wasn't the case. Your parents had such a splendid house. I replied. Wait a moment. She boldly walked into the depths of the house. Oh. Mom, this is inconvenient. Some areas are messy. I protested. Undeterred, she declared. Don't fuss over details. More importantly, this house will be inherited by my son. I wonder if I should take this room. I hesitated. Mom. Um, actually, I'm the one inheriting this house. She smirked. I know. Your parents didn't have any other children, right? And isn't a wife's belongings her husband's? So, in essence, this house belongs to my son, doesn't it? I sighed. Is that really the case? She cheerfully added. From now on, let's get along. I hesitated. What do you mean by a get along? She confidently replied. I mean turning this room into my room. After all, you and Michael will move here later, won't you? I asked. Does that mean we'll be living together? She declared. Exactly. I've decided. With such a splendid house, it'd be a waste to have empty rooms when two people can live here. Ah, finally, I won't have to take care of my husband all by myself. Unfortunately, my mother recently passed away, and yet my mother-in-law is saying such things. Can't she see the sadness on my face? I'm gradually getting angry with her. Even though my mother's funeral has just concluded, why would she joke around at a time like this? At that moment, it seemed my conversation with my mother-in-law caught my husband's attention. He stepped in. Mom! What are you saying? This isn't the right time for such discussions. My mother-in-law retorted. Why make such a fuss? But my husband was firm. Enough! Just leave. He escorted her out of the house. Sorry. My mom can be unreasonable. He apologized. It's fine. Thanks to you for handling it. I replied. At that moment, I felt grateful for my dependable husband. However, I would later realize that the reason my husband scolded my mother-in-law was subtly different from my own perspective. Ten days after my mother's funeral, as things settled down a bit, we decided to discuss my family home. It was then that my husband made an unexpected proposal. This apartment is cramped. Shouldn't we move back to my parents' house? I suggested. Yeah, you're right. With more belongings and the possibility of having kids, it's better than squeezing into this tiny apartment. He agreed. Well, then we should start preparing for the move. Then he said hesitantly. So, I have one thing to discuss regarding the move. What's the matter? I asked. He hesitated before saying. Considering the spacious house, all the empty rooms. I thought maybe my parents could move in with us. Wait, are you suggesting we live together? I asked, surprised. My husband is kind, but recently, I've noticed something. While I thought he always prioritized my opinions, I wonder if he's actually just a yes man. Could he be an outright pushover? His suggestion about living with my mother-in-law, and the way he complies with her requests for my persuasion, makes me wonder. Moreover, despite knowing I'm against cohabitation, he repeatedly proposes it to me, 
prioritizing her over me. Haven't I said it repeatedly? We won't live together. I remind him. He responds. But mom keeps insisting on it. I counter. During the funeral, you scolded her, didn't you? You stood up for me and opposed cohabitation. Well, yes, I was upset about her barging into the house, but that doesn't mean I'm entirely against living together. I just thought such an important decision shouldn't be made casually in that setting. It was decisive. My husband merely nods and relays my words, but he seems more inclined toward my mother-in-law. Moreover, despite advocating for proper discussions, he maintains a certain distance and avoids making definitive decisions. Perhaps he's unconsciously doing this, believing he remains neutral. People of this type can be quite tricky, they convince themselves they're neutral and capable of making the right judgments. It's frustrating. Anyway, I oppose living with someone who barged into my parents' house on the day of the funeral and suggested a living in this room. I've said it before, and I won't change my stance. Please convey this to your mom. My husband responds. Why? You seem really bothered by it. Fine, I'll let her know. While I prefer to avoid living with my in-laws, I've prepared myself for the possibility, depending on the circumstances when we got married. However, witnessing my mother-in-law's behavior during my mother's funeral, can I imagine living together in the cherished home my respected father built and where my mother lived? Now that I've become aware of my husband's lack of assertiveness, cohabitation is unthinkable. When my husband conveyed my opposition to cohabitation, my mother-in-law directly protested by calling me. Why are you opposing cohabitation when there's such a spacious house? You're Michael's wife now, and his father and I are your parents, right? Why such strong opposition to living together with us? I've already declined cohabitation before. I apologize. My husband has mobility issues and it's challenging for me alone. Are you saying you'll abandon U.S.? Did you hear the reasons from my husband? I apologize, but... This heartless person! I won't ask anything of you anymore! I feel sorry for my father-in-law's health condition. However, based on my mother-in-law's past behavior, I can imagine a future where everything related to my father-in-law would be pushed onto me if we were to live together. If we do decide to live together, significant improvement in my husband and mother-in-law's mindset is an absolute requirement. A few days after my mother-in-law called me heartless, my husband suddenly started rearranging the living room, moving the sofa, tables, and creating space. What are you doing? Is this for storing moving boxes? I asked. He replied. No, I'm planning to make space for two beds here. The mention of two beds filled me with a sense of dread. I cautiously asked. Are your parents coming to stay? He responded. No, they're moving and starting today, even before the move. This is truly the worst. Despite my opposition to cohabitation, my husband and mother-in-law have forced it upon me. She told me that she would no longer rely on me, but it seems she is now turning to my husband instead. Why is this happening? I questioned. He explained. Their lease is up, so we decided they'd move here without renewing. It'll be cramped for four people, but we're moving soon, right? Just bear with it for a little while. But that's not what I meant. Why is cohabitation even on the table? I've said it before, I don't want to live with someone who barged into my parents' house on the day of the funeral and suggested a living in this room. I'll make sure to talk to mom. We'll be living together from now on, so please get along. 
why do you prioritize everything your mom says? I asked. He clarified. It's not about prioritizing her. I listened to both of your opinions and made a judgment. My husband, the ultimate yes man when it comes to my mother-in-law, seems to have fallen for her cohabitation strategy. Perhaps he's unwittingly swayed by her, believing he's making independent judgments. I used to think of my husband as kind and good-hearted, but when paired with my mother-in-law, he becomes quite a handful. And so, I find myself forced into cohabitation with my in-laws. Welcome. As I suspected, this apartment is cramped for four adults. We'll endure it until the move. It's infuriating. She just rolled in here, and now she's complaining about the room. I apologize for suddenly adding two elderly people. We'll try not to inconvenience you. No, if there's any inconvenience due to your mobility issues, please let us know. My father-in-law, Tony, has mobility issues, but he seems better than expected. He experiences mild discomfort when standing up, but nothing severe. Was my mother-in-law genuinely struggling to care for him? He's polite and even offered to handle what he can on his own. Unlike my mother-in-law, my father-in-law doesn't seem problematic. Or so I thought. Is there a drugstore nearby? It seems I forgot to bring my medicated patch with me, and I'd like to buy one. Hold on, dear. Considering your mobility issues, you should stay put. If you fall outside, it'll inconvenience Michael and the others, won't it? Ask them to buy the medicated patch for you. But I've been going to buy it myself until now. Didn't they tell you to let them know if you face any inconvenience? Well, I guess you're right. Sorry, but I need it urgently. Could you go buy it for me? Sigh. Understood. While running an errand for a medicated patch isn't a big deal, why does my mother-in-law make decisions without involving me in the conversation? Also, my father-in-law appears polite on the surface but he seems to follow my mother-in-law's lead. Like my husband, he's become her yes-man. This time it's a minor errand, but as we continue living together, I fear everything will eventually be pushed onto me. Can I allow these people to live in the cherished home my parents left behind? It's no joke. If they move in, they'll tarnish the house. I must find a way to protect my parents' home. As my mother-in-law and father-in-law prepared for their move to my parents' home, I decided to take preemptive action before their relocation. My mother-in-law was in high spirits, excited about moving to a spacious house. Hey, can you lend us the key to your parents' house? We'd like to check out our rooms. I have some errands to run, so I'll give the key to Michael. Michael, can you drop us off? Before heading home, we want to stop by the storage room where we dumped our belongings. We need to measure the furniture sizes. Got it. I'll take the key. With my mother-in-law's good mood, there were no clashes between us, and about 10 days passed uneventfully. However, behind the scenes, my preparations were progressing steadily. All right. The moving preparations are complete. Soon, life in that house will begin. Once my husband and my in-laws finished their moving preparations, it was time for me to reveal a shocking truth to the three of them. Everyone, I have something to discuss. My husband replied. What is it? Get to the point. My mother-in-law wondered. Is it about plans for celebrating our move? I clarified. No, we won't be moving to that house. She exclaimed. What? What do you mean? I handed over a document. 
This is an application for renouncing my inheritance. My husband protested. Renouncing your inheritance? Come on, that's a joke, right? I insisted. It's not a joke. Look, there's an official court approval here. For me, that house holds immense sentimental value. I couldn't bear the thought of you living there. So, I decided to let go of the house, preserving it as a beautiful memory in my heart. My mother-in-law scolded. What madness possessed you? Even if you were letting it go, you could have sold it for money. Why abandon the house? I explained. Even if I sold it, you'd just rely on that money next. I thought it'd be clearer if I simply had nothing. She retorted. We moved out of our previous place for this move, you know? What are you doing? How will you make it up to us? I stood my ground. I've consistently opposed cohabitation. Yet, without proper discussion, you forced it upon me. So, I took a firm stance. Upon learning that I had renounced my inheritance, both my husband and mother-in-law seemed stunned, their faces drained of color. They were speechless, their strength sapped. My father-in-law looked bewildered as he observed the two of them. However, I wasn't about to let up. Michael. I continued. I've been thinking about getting a divorce. What do you think? Ha! Huh? Divorce? My husband stammered. Michael! You should divorce this ridiculous wife immediately! My mother-in-law chimed in. I had anticipated her immediate demand for divorce. What I wanted to confirm was whether my husband could make an independent decision at this critical moment. If he deferred to my mother-in-law now, it would make our future together even more challenging. Even if you're suddenly asked about divorce, it's troubling, mom? My husband mumbled. His response was still pending, but my resolve to proceed with the divorce had solidified. My mother-in-law snapped. Fine. Divorce is the only option. My father-in-law interjected. Michael, it can't be helped. Your mom insists. My husband sighed. Well, you seem to want a divorce too, and maybe that's for the best. Even in significant decisions, my husband and father-in-law remained yes-men to my mother-in-law. And now, my husband's words made it sound as if he changed his opinion for my sake. Very well. I declared. Let's proceed with the divorce. I'll be moving out. With minimal belongings, I spent the night at a budget hotel. The next day, I had urgent matters to attend to, so I took half a day off work and headed back to the courthouse. A few days later, my mother-in-law called me. You! What's going on? It seems that house is becoming yours. Why the sudden outburst? Ah. Did you find out through the estate division process? Yes, that house belongs to me. You forged documents and deceived us. Why would I forge documents meant for court submission? Those are genuine. Then why is the house becoming yours when you were supposed to renounce the inheritance? Well, right after that, I promptly withdrew the application, you know. Renouncing an inheritance is difficult once the application is accepted. However, it takes about a month for the renunciation application to be accepted, during which time it can be withdrawn at any point. The documents I showed my in-laws were not acceptance-related. They were from the application stage. 
I intentionally made them believe I had relinquished the house and confronted them with the prospect of divorce to gauge their reactions and decide my next steps. I didn't expect my mother-in-law's mindset to change, but I hoped my husband would reconsider and express that he didn't want a divorce. If he said he didn't want a divorce, I planned to rethink it and later explain about the house. However, So the house really becomes yours? Then, since it was acquired before the divorce, it's subject to property division, right? In such cases, you two are supposed to split the money from selling it, don't you? My mother-in-law seemed intent on taking whatever she could from me, knowing the house wouldn't be hers. But I had anticipated this. If that house were jointly acquired by us, it would indeed be considered shared property. However, that house is a unique asset acquired through inheritance, so it won't be subject to property division. Unfortunately, specific assets like this aren't eligible for division. When you heard that the house would become mine, didn't you consult with a lawyer? If Michael had paid off the house loan or covered renovation costs, those expenses might have been considered for division, but I assume that didn't happen, right? So, what about the money that would come to Michael through property division? Well, we've only been married for a few years, so there's hardly anything substantial. Maybe just the car? Although there's still an outstanding loan on it. <laughs> You're going to selfishly claim the inheritance, aren't you? Heartless. I'm protecting that house because it holds precious memories of my parents. I don't want people like you living there. If you have any further complaints, please go through a lawyer. After the call with my mother-in-law, divorce proceedings proceeded smoothly. Presumably, she urged my husband to divorce me promptly. Regardless, the divorce was finalized, and I no longer had to contend with my in-laws. I felt a sense of relief, as if I'd successfully safeguarded my father's home from harm. After I moved out, my former in-laws apparently spent some time in the apartment where my ex-husband and I used to live. The apartment wasn't very spacious, so even with one less person, it must have felt quite cramped. My former mother-in-law explored new housing options but due to their age, my ex-husband's parents faced challenges passing rental application screenings. Consequently, my ex-husband decided to rent a smaller single-family home for them to live together. Although it's smaller, it's still a house, so the rent is likely higher than what they paid for the apartment. He'll also need to support his parents going forward. My ex-husband is probably in for a challenging life. My former mother-in-law was excited about moving into the large house my father left behind, but now she's settling for a considerably smaller home. I imagine she's quite disappointed. As for me, I've started a new life in the house my parents left behind. It feels warm, as if my parents are still there with me. How did you find this story? If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time. My name is Abby, I am 27 years old. I have been married for three years to my husband Tim, a high school classmate, and I am a full-time housewife. We are a good couple and have never been involved in an affair with each other. I never imagined that we would break up because of cheating. Have a good day, be careful. Are you going to be late again today? Yeah, I've been invited for a drink by my boss today, so I'll be late. You can go to bed first, as usual. Our roles were completely separated, with Tim working in me, a stay-at-home wife, taking care of all the housework. That day, after I sent Tim off as usual, I cleaned the house from top to bottom. However, there was one thing that was different from usual. I cleaned Tim's study. You don't have to clean my study. I have things in there that I use for work, and I don't want them moved without my permission. 
Tim usually did not want to let me into his study, but that day, I happened to look in through the open door and saw that the study was a mess and not in the best of cleanliness. I didn't clean it because he promised me that he would clean it regularly. But now I can't even find anything for work, can I? It can't be helped. Let's just quickly organize what we can see. I'll just get it out of the way. Tim has recently been traveling on business and working on holidays more often than when they were first married. This probably meant that he was not able to clean his study as much as he used to. Seeing the mess in his study, I decided to clean it up for good. Then. What is this? A notebook I've never seen before. As I was rearranging his desk, I found a red notebook that I had never seen before. Normally I would not look at Tim's things without permission, but for some reason I felt the urge to open it and check inside. I felt bad, but when I opened the notebook. What is this? What does it mean? There was a picture of Tim and a woman with a baby in their arms. What's more? Why is Catherine in the picture with them? The woman was Catherine, a classmate of mine who had attended the same high school as Tim and I. Catherine was a friend who had studied in the same class with us throughout high school. But she must not have had much contact with Tim. So why was she in the picture with Tim holding the child? The atmosphere suggests it's the child's birthday, right? Whose child is this? And why is he holding the child? As one unpleasant thought after another came into my mind, I decided to search his notebook for any other clues. Then, I discovered an even more outrageous fact. The notebook had a name and birthday that seemed to belong to the child in the photo, and on the date he had told me he was on a business trip, he had left a note saying he had gone out with Catherine. Apparently, from the contents of the notebook, this child was definitely Tim's child. Why is this, why? At the back of the notebook was a brown envelope with no writing on it. I looked at the envelope and saw that it contained a completed divorce decree. He had the divorce papers ready, and yet he has been living his life as if nothing had ever happened. Divorce papers, don't tell me you're divorcing me. You prepared the divorce papers, but you've been living your life as if nothing had happened. You thought I didn't know anything and did whatever you wanted. I will never forgive you. I will make you regret it. And so I swore revenge against him for trying to betray me. However, Tim, who had no idea that such a thing was happening, went home carefree after that. I'm home. Oh no, I'm so tired today. Welcome home. You're back later than I thought. Tim yeah, my boss got pretty drunk. And he kept nagging me to drink and drink. And I couldn't get out of it. Hey, were you really out drinking with your boss? What? Yes, but what? Are you accusing me of something? No, I'm not doubting you. I just thought you were always working late. Hmm. That's fine. Oh, that's right. My boss at work invited me to stay over and play golf on the 23rd and 24th of this month. Take care of the house. Overnight outing? Just the two of you with your boss? That's right. My boss is a guy. You've met him before, Abby. He's Corby, my immediate boss. It's also Corby who was drinking with us today. It's nothing like you think. Yeah, okay. What the hell, something's wrong with you today. You're usually so willing to send me off. I feel bad for making you leave me alone every time I have a day off but this is also an important job for me to be liked by my boss and get ahead. Please forgive me. 
right? Tim told me in a white-knuckle manner. But I knew. I knew it was all a lie. According to the schedule in my notebook, the three of them were going to go to an amusement park for the first time with Catherine and her family. So I decided to make that day the day I would take my revenge. I thought it would be better to experience despair after the happy memories. I know. Forget about me, and have fun without a care in the world. Yeah, 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 I'll have fun. But I'm going to buy you a souvenir on the way home, so look forward to it, okay? Tim puts his hand on my head as he says this. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll get you something in return, something that will surprise you when you get home. A surprise? I don't know. You'll have to wait until the day of the party to find out. I'm sure you'll be very surprised. About a month later. I treated Tim as if nothing had happened and went on with my life as usual. And then, in the blink of an eye, the day of the event came. Well, I'm going to go. Call me if anything happens. I'll be with my boss. I don't know if I'll be able to respond right away, but I'll keep an eye on my phone as much as possible. Okay, I'll try to keep an eye on my phone. Take care of yourself. Tim didn't even know I was aware and took his unwanted golf bag out to the amusement park. He would probably leave it somewhere and change his clothes before heading to the girl's house. I stifled a laugh at Tim for going out of his way to make such a small trick, and I would get my revenge. I set about my final preparations. Two days after he left. When he came home, he noticed my surprise and called me in a panic. Oh, hey, Abby, where are you in the ministry? What's going on in that house? What the heck is going on? What? I told you I'd have a surprise for you when you got home. How's that? What do you think? Oh, I'm surprised, but... It's like your stuff is all gone. It's like I'm living in this house all by myself. Yes, it is. You're going to be living in that house by yourself, not like you're living in a house by yourself. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Don't make me laugh. You're the one who hid those filled out divorce papers, didn't you want to live alone? Oh, no, you wanted to live with Catherine and her child, not alone. Oh, you don't mean that notebook in the study? I'm sorry, but I saw everything. I saw all the pictures of Catherine, the kids, and the three of you getting along. And all the posts where you lied to me about going on a business trip or working on a day off to play with them. I told you not to go into my study. Because it was in such disarray, I didn't think you'd find what you were looking for in there. I did the best I could to clean it up, but I think I found something terrible. Don't do anything unnecessary. You promised me you wouldn't clean the study. You cheated on me and had a child with me. You talk about common sense. You're an idiot. You didn't go golfing with your boss today either. How was your first time at an amusement park with the three of you? I wish I could have been there. You. You've got to be kidding me. You're the one who's joking, aren't you? You've fooled me for well over a year now. I didn't think you'd be in that kind of trouble with my high school friends. Well, that's... Ministry. I guess I was the only one who thought we made a good couple all these years. So, as you wanted, I signed those filled out divorce papers and filed them with the authorities today. We are no longer husband and wife, so you can go to them or do whatever you want. Wait a minute. Don't tell me you just signed the divorce papers on your own while I was out of the house. 
Yes, but what's the problem? I'm sure you've prepared the divorce papers because you want a divorce, right? You were so polite that you only filled out your section and put your stamp on it. It seemed like you couldn't easily turn in the divorce papers to me, so I filled out my section and turned them in for you. Tim returned home with some random souvenirs he had bought at the station so that his visit to the amusement park would not be discovered. What was waiting for him was a room with only my stuff missing and the fact that his wife, who knew everything, had filed divorce papers. Okay, I'm sorry. Just come home for now. And let me talk to you, please. What's so obvious? Besides, I have nothing more to say to you. And if I want to talk to you, you're just going to give me excuses, aren't you? No, no. I don't want to waste my time listening to you. I don't care. It's not worth asking why you cheated on me or why this happened. Oh, no. Do you know how I felt from the day I found out you wanted a divorce until now? How painful it was for me to smile at your bland attitude without knowing that I knew. But it doesn't matter anymore. I found a job and moved into a new house within a month of that day. No matter how many excuses you make, I will never go back to you. You must be happy because you wanted this outcome in the first place. What are you so upset about? Is there something wrong with you if I turn over the divorce papers to you? No, no, that's… Oh, yes, I've already contacted my in-laws earlier. I'm sure they'll be in touch soon. Tim, did you talk to my fathers about it? Of course I did. We were a married couple, so I had to tell them when we got divorced. What the hell did you say to them? I told them everything I saw, exactly as I saw it. What did they say when you did that? If you're so concerned about your parents' reaction, why don't you ask them yourself? Why don't you eye them, I don't know how I can do that, you know how strict my parents are. I don't care. Goodbye. Oh, hey, wait a minute, Abby, Abby, Abby. I hung up the phone, ignoring the sound of him yelling that. My in-laws, especially my father-in-law, were old-fashioned and strict. He hated crookedness, and Tim had since he was a kid. Don't do anything that will get people in trouble. Be a person who can think about other people's feelings. He had always told me that he was raised strictly with this in mind. And yet, Tim was caught having an affair with a friend of his wife's and having a child with her, without considering his wife's feelings, which is the most important thing to consider. Eventually, after I hung up the phone, my in-laws apparently contacted me and we decided to discuss the matter. I personally had no intention of discussing it, but it was a big deal for both parents. Six of us, including myself, him, my parents-in-law, and my parents, gathered at my parents-in-law's house, and in the worst possible atmosphere, we started the discussion and the questioning of him. The discussion and the questioning of him started in the worst possible atmosphere. He must have already been questioned by my parents-in-law. He was sitting on a chair with a dismal look on his face. So, what the hell is going on? How could he have a child with another woman while he was still married to you? Explain it properly so that everyone can understand it from beginning to end. Tim did not rebel against ex-father-in-law's words, but instead, as if giving up, he began to tell me the story of his life up to now. I got involved with her because of a high school reunion two years ago. She was originally a friend of Abby's, and I never had any contact with her in high school, but she approached me that day. It's been a long time. Do you remember me? Uh, yeah, I remember you. You're Abby's friend, Catherine. 
Catherine, you remember me. I'm so glad. You were at our wedding. Catherine, oh yeah. We didn't have much contact in high school, but I actually always had a crush on you. What? So I'm glad you remember my name. If you don't mind, can I ask you for your contact information or something? Maybe we could go out to dinner sometime? No, but I thought you were married too. I don't think it's a good idea to exchange contact information with the opposite sex when we are both married. And with Abby's friend. That's fine as long as Abby doesn't know about it. Everyone does this kind of thing. Abby and you are both too uptight. It's not like I'm asking you to do something sinister. So, okay. Don't tell Abby. He fell for those words and started to meet her secretly without telling me. And eventually, they developed a physical relationship. You know, I think I'm pregnant. I went to the hospital because I wasn't feeling well, I'm five weeks. What? Catherine, I'm going to divorce my husband, and I haven't had anything sexual with him like that. So you don't think? Catherine, yes, this is your child. I'm so happy to have a child with you, you've always been my dream. I'm so happy. Will you come with me to my next checkup? Which would make you happier, a boy or a girl? What would you name it? Wait a minute. We're both married. If she finds out I'm having a baby, I'll... Catherine, why do you say that? I thought you'd be happy. Oh, no, it's not that. Are you sure you don't want to take responsibility for? Well, what responsibility? Of course you're going to marry me and be the father of this child. What other kind of responsibility is there? But I'm not going to divorce my wife. I'm not going to do anything wrong. You're the one who told me you weren't going to do anything wrong, and now you're doing this to me. You don't want me to be in trouble. You knew that we had this kind of relationship, didn't you? It's terrible. It's too much. If you don't take responsibility, I don't know what I will do. I will expose everything to Abby, to all my classmates, to everyone in the company, and I will never forgive you. Okay, 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 just calm down for now. Well, will you divorce Abby and marry me? Okay. And so he was threatened for having a child and agreed to have the baby. He began to prepare to divorce me, he told me. You, do you know what you have done? I know, but I don't know what she was going to do if I don't take responsibility. I had to do that. Are you kidding me? It may have been Catherine who approached you. But if you had said no to Catherine, this would not have happened. I'm not trying to escape from my mistake, I'm just... Just what? I didn't want to divorce you, I was just threatened by Catherine, I didn't want to divorce you at all. I didn't even want to prepare divorce papers like that. Well, did you not? Yeah, of course. I'm serious. That's why I'm going to pay child support out of my own salary. But I want to continue to live with you, not Catherine, please, please, please start over with me again. He bows his head to me saying so. But I knew there was something he was still hiding from me. Then what is this? Saying that, he held out a single brown envelope in front of everyone. Is this? It's the envelope I found with him when I went into his study. It was placed in a different place from the divorce papers, and at first I thought it was unrelated. But when I looked at the contents, I was surprised. It was a photo evidence of a fabricated affair that made it look like I was having an affair. 
What the? Apparently, he had hired a contractor to make up a story about my affair, and the receipts, business cards, etc. were in the package. I think it was total bullshit that he didn't want to divorce me and he lied to get me through this. Right? What about you? Why would you do that? Tim well, it's... Tim, can you please stop hiding things from me any longer? If you keep hiding it like this, they will eventually find out. Just give up and tell us everything. He was questioned by all of them and was in a desperate situation. Realizing that he could no longer escape, he began to tell the truth. To be honest, before the baby was born, I really didn't think about divorcing Abby. But when my child was born and I saw the look on my own child's face, I started to think that I wanted to leave Abby and live with Catherine and my child. And when it came time to ask for a divorce, I didn't know how to tell Abby that I wanted a divorce. If I just asked her for a divorce, she would definitely ask me why. And if I told her that we had a personality mismatch, she would know that it was a lie because we had been getting along so well since we got married. But that doesn't mean I can't tell them the truth. If I told them, I wouldn't be able to face Abby or my parents. So I'm not going to. That's not true. That's not the main reason, is it? You didn't want to pay me alimony for the affair. That's why you wanted to make it look like I cheated on you and force me to divorce you. No, no, no. No, it's not different. On the contrary, you wanted to charge me alimony and use the money to live happily together, didn't you? Am I wrong? You didn't go that far. I can't believe it. What are you talking about? Then why were you in such a hurry when I filed the divorce papers without telling you? It was because you couldn't confront me with the evidence of the affair that you went to the trouble of paying for, wasn't it? Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to file for alimony, would you? Well, that's... You were supposed to get alimony from me and live happily together as father and son. Did you think I didn't know that? So, that's why I... If you can argue with me, why don't you argue with me? We already have all the evidence over here. So no matter what rebuttal you come up with, I'm confident that I can overturn it all. So go ahead. Tim. He couldn't refute anything more, so he turned over and fell silent. Well, looks like you have nothing more to say to me. Well, here's one from me. Is this. It's a bill for alimony, of course. I had asked my lawyer to prepare a bill in advance. I was going to send it to you, but we decided to discuss it, so it was perfect. Then he looked over the fee bill with trepidation. What the heck, $40,000, there's no way I can get that much for a mere two years or so of alimony for an affair. What the hell do you think you guys did in those two years? Married people having children with each other, what's mere about that? Do you think I'm a fool? But there is no way I can afford $40,000. I'm going to have to pay for my child, and of course I can't afford it. What does that have to do with me? I think the money for the child and the alimony for me are two completely different things. If you're worried about losing money to spend on the kids, why don't you bring it from somewhere else? What the hell is that? You want me to borrow money from you? I didn't say that. I'm just saying it's none of my business. You. You're real bloodless. $40,000. That's a joke. Are you kidding me? You're the one who's joking, you're the one who brought this on yourself. Yes, Abby, you're right. 
The money for the child and the alimony are two completely different things. Not paying alimony because of the kids is just plain wrong. But, 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 shut up. The only thing you have to do is to pay alimony to Abby and apologize sincerely. Oh no. Shut up. I'll cut you off if you say you can't do it. We didn't raise you like that. Get out of here right now. His father-in-law's angry voice made him lose his temper at once. He admitted to cheating on me and agreed to pay me alimony. But of course I still had one thing left to do. That is to take revenge on Catherine, the woman he cheated on me with, who was a friend of mine. I immediately sent a content certified letter to Catherine to claim the same alimony as I did. However, there was no way she would comply with my demand since she had approached him knowing that he was married. A few days later, after receiving the content certified letter, she called me to complain. He told me everything. He told me that you found out about our relationship. But isn't it strange that you are demanding alimony from me too? Why? Why? What's so funny? You knew he was married, but you had relations with him, so it is natural that I should charge you alimony. Of course not. I have his child here. So what? So what does it matter if you two raise the child or not? It has nothing to do with this. We are going to raise our child together and we don't have the money to pay alimony. So? That's why I'm asking you to withdraw the alimony demand. Why is the world so hard on the child-rearing generation? If you don't have kids, support your generation in your own way. You didn't catch him cheating on you in the first place, did you? Don't blame it on me alone. How can you say that? What are you talking about? You're totally missing the point. Please. Look, I've heard all the stories from him too, but he told me that you were pressuring him to marry just because you were having a baby. You threatened to do anything if he didn't take responsibility for you. Oh, no, that's not. Isn't it strange that you would say you don't care about the alimony claim after doing such a thing? Or are you still insisting that it's not your fault? Well, that's... I thought we were friends. You even came to my wedding. Why did you do this? Because I don't have a choice. I liked him before you started dating him. And then you started dating him, and then you got married. I saw your happy faces at the wedding, and I was ready to give up, but then I saw him again at our reunion two years ago, and I couldn't hold back the feelings I had been suppressing, so. You approached him and asked him to marry because you were going to have a baby. Ha, huh, we've already broken up, so you can do what you want with him. Or rather, I am. It's none of my business, so why don't you just get married or whatever? But you had a relationship with him when we were married, so you'll have to take full responsibility for that. And so Catherine could say nothing more and did not speak a word until I finally hung up the phone. However, perhaps my words had an effect, because she then contacted me to say that she accepted the alimony claim and would pay it. Tim and Catherine were very happy. Tim and his girlfriend have been paying me alimony every month without fail. But I never heard from them again. A few months passed and I was getting used to life in a new place. I ran into my ex-mother-in-law by chance while shopping. She told me what had happened to him. Actually, they got remarried after that, but... To my surprise, that child was not my son's child. What? It seems that she pretended that he was my son's child so that she could marry him. As he grew up, he didn't look anything like her, so he secretly had him tested. 
When he questioned her about it, she confessed that it was her ex-husband's child. The child in the photo was not his, but that of her ex-husband. Tim had fallen right into her trap. She thought she could take him if she told him she was having a child. Well, it looks like she did, but now she is in hell. She doesn't want to leave him, and my son is furious. They're even going to divorce court. That's not possible. But this is my son's own fault. Even though she cheated on him, I'm sure he had an affair. Neither my husband nor I have any intention of taking his son's side. He got what he deserved for cheating on his wife. I think he deserved it. I'm sorry to have to tell the story here. When I saw you, I just had to tell you the story. I hope you will be happy and forget about that stupid son of ours. With that, my ex-mother-in-law left. It was my ex-mother-in-law's kindness to tell me this story. I never saw my in-laws or Tim again. I have no idea what his life is like now, but that is no longer my concern. What did you think of this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.